In this video, we're going to be solving a roller coaster problem where we're going to be using some energy concepts as well as circular motion concepts. So we're going to be starting at this initial position right over here where we are going to have some gravitational potential energy, and that's about it. Um, as soon as a roller coaster gets to the top of a loop and the person is upside down, they will still have some potential energy because they are off the ground and they will also have some kinetic energy because they are in motion. So we know that the MGH is going to equal what we call MG. 2r because the height is double the radius which is the di diameter plus one half mv squared assuming that it's frictionless and air resistance isn't significant because of the conservation of energy all the energy that we have in the beginning loaded up from the hill we will have that energy as the sum of the potential energy at the top of the loop plus the kinetic energy now with that being said let's go ahead and switch to some circular motion ideas. As this person is here, they feel the force of gravity pulling them down as usual, and then they feel the normal force from their seat pushing them perpendicular. Now, when they're upside down, the seat is pointing towards the ground, so the normal force and the force of gravity are both pointing towards the center of the circle. That means that the force of gravity plus the normal force equals your centripetal force, and your centripetal force is mv squared over r. Now, if you're trying to figure out the minimum height of this first hill in order to clear that loop, then that means when normal force would equal zero exactly. So then that means that that's the minimum speed to where you feel weightless, but you're just making it through the loop. And then for the fg, we're going to call that mg. So it turns out that we don't really care about the mass of the person. And what we can do is we can do a quick little substitution. And over here, I notice that there is a V squared and th there's a V squared over here as well. So if we just multiply both sides by R, then we get G R equals V squared. Normally we would maybe square root both sides, but it doesn't look like that's necessary. So let's go ahead and take that G R and put it in right over there. That would mean we then have M G H equals mg2r plus one half mgr. Now from there, our masses are going to drop out. Our g's are also going to drop out as well. So from there, we know the height is equal to 2r plus one half r. So that's two and a half r. And we did actually know the radius, and we do actually know the radius, excuse me. So we can go ahead and plug in the 12 meters over there. So then our final height is going to be 30 meters. So when working out a problem like this, uh, the main concepts you have to use will have to be energy ideas. Um, as we did over here with our initial setup in blue. But then in addition, you're going to have to use some circular motion ideas as I did in orange so that you can make a little substitution and make things a little bit easier. In the end, the height of your initial hill is going to be two and a half times the radius of the loop that you're going through. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.